Hi, I'm Claire Santayana. My students call me Miss Claire. I have long hair, so it's easy to remember. Um, this is the packet from the Nave Museum. I'm really excited to open it. It has acrylic paint. And it looks like it has the primary colors. That Those are red, blue, and yellow. So those are the colors that come first, the primary colors. And they also gave us black and white. And some paintbrushes. Looks like they gave us a small paintbrush and a bigger paintbrush. I have this palette because I know I'm going to be doing an acrylic painting today. If you have paper plates, that works perfectly as well. Uh, you could also put it on a piece of paper, but I do recommend more of a paper plate. So, inside the packet, there are two pictures, and I'm going to pull out Colorado Mountains. So, Colorado Mountains is what we are going to be painting today. Mr. Nave enjoyed traveling and he painted on his travels. So he painted Colorado Mountains one time when he was in Colorado. And I just happened to have just moved from Colorado, so I, I also like Colorado Mountains. But when we're looking at this color wheel here, I see that red, yellow, and blue are the primary colors. But really, with those colors, I can make any of these colors here on this color wheel. So you'll see that blue and yellow, what's in between those? Directly in between is green. So we can make green. And with yellow and red, directly in between is orange. Red and blue, directly in between is violet. So we already have the primary colors and the secondary colors. We also have the tertiary colors. So by mixing green and yellow, you get yellow green, green and blue, blue green, etc. And that is the tertiary colors. So we can make all these colors. We can also add white to make it lighter. You can add black to make it darker, but I like to use the complementary color to make things darker, as we talked about last week. So green and red, is what I'm going to use to make a darker green or a darker red. So we're gonna practice that as we create Colorado Mountains here. So I'm looking here at Colorado Mountains and I'm looking for my horizon line. That's where the sky meets the earth. And to me, it looks like it's right here. That's the horizon line. This is a bush that's kind of in front of my horizon line or some trees there. So I'm gonna try to draw this horizon line I'm going to go ahead and draw this little slope here just so that I know that that's a difference in the change of color. And with your pencil, because I'm using a Sharpie, but you should probably use a pencil, you could lightly draw these little trees as circles. And when I say lightly, I say, I mean just barely touch the paper so that you can see your line. And that way later when you paint on top of it, your line won't show through if you do it super light. So let me do that with the Sharpie now so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm gonna start over here. And I'm just drawing what I see here in my horizon line. And then I'm gonna draw this. And remember, yours is with a pencil and you're drawing super, super light with that pencil. And I noted my bushes and I made organic shapes and then I noted the slope and I noted the mountains. The clouds I wouldn't worry about because the clouds are gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do that with the paintbrush. So I have here the basic outline of what I see in Colorado mountains. I see the horizon line and then that little slope and the trees and I just did really loose organic shapes for the trees because I'm going to show you how to do leaves. Now we get to open our paint that was provided in our packet. If you didn't get a packet from the Nave Museum, then you can just use these colors of acrylic paint. Acrylic paint is just a fast drying paint. So it dries a lot faster than oil paint 
Oil paint is what Mr. Knave would have used, or what he did use for this painting. And so Mr. Knave did use oil paint, and we're using this acrylic paint. And then I did add the water because acrylic paint is water soluble, which means it mixes with water while it's wet, but once it dries, it is water resistant. And I need paper towels. So you will also probably need paper towels because after you rinse your brush, you're gonna wanna use um, a paper towel to dry. So I'm gonna add my paper towel. Now the first thing I'm gonna start with is the sky because we are painting, I'm gonna go from top to bottom so that I'm not rubbing my hand all in it. Um, and I notice on this sky that it's not deep dark blue like right here. It is more of a light blue, but it's lighter the closer we get to the horizon. So it's darker up here and lighter down here. Um, so I'm going to work from top to bottom and then we're going to work in those clouds. And notice the shadows in the clouds. There's a few shadows. So we're going to add those two. There's some yellow. Mr. Nave likes to use lots of color. So that's what we're going to do today. So I have my palette or my paper plate if you're using a paper plate. And we're going to add blue. Now, if you want to preserve your paints, which I always do, I try not to waste paint, you're going to rinse your brush in between getting your paint because you're not going to want to get blue all inside of your white and ruin your white already because you might need white later on in this painting. So I'm adding my blue like this, adding my white and blue together, and I have a lighter blue now. So what do you think I'm going to do to make this blue even lighter? You got it. I'm going to add white. So I'm going to go ahead and start painting and the blue and the painting is bright. You can experiment with making different types of blues. If you want to, you can add a little yellow, not too much. Cause what color will it turn? If we add yellow, if we add yellow with blue, it turns green. So if you're going for more of this color of a blue, you can add a little yellow and let's see what that does. Just makes a different blue. So we're going to go ahead and paint side to side again, kind of like with the water. And if you look at the Colorado Mountains painting, you'll see that there are side to side strokes in there. And then for the clouds, you're just going to go ahead and swoosh the clouds in. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh like this. We're swooshing those clouds. Now I'm going to go back and add more blue like this. And, and the blue and the painting is bright. You can experiment with making different types of blues. If you want to, you can add a little yellow. Not too much, because what color will it turn if we add yellow? If we add yellow with blue, it turns green. So if you're going for more of this color of blue, you can add a little yellow. And let's see what that does. Just makes a different blue. So we're going to go ahead and paint side to side again, kind of like with the water. And if you look at the Colorado Mountains painting, you'll see that there are side to side strokes in there. And then for the clouds, you're just going to go ahead and swoosh the clouds in. Swoosh, 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 like this. We're swooshing those clouds. I'm going to go back and add more blue, like this. And I am getting it off of this paper a little bit, so you might want to put like newspaper or something underneath your paper so that you don't get the paint all over your surface. So I just rinsed it again because I am out of my color. And I'm going to pour some color just because I know I need a lot of blue for this part. And I'm going to pour some white because I don't want to contaminate my white yet. Oh, look, I did, but it's okay. I'm not going to be upset. It's still good white. Even if it gets a little dirty. We're trying not to contaminate it, but if we mess up, that's okay. So then I'm going to add some white over here. I'm just swishing in the clouds. We're just swishing them in. And it might be more messy with my palette. That's how I like to work sometimes. Um, I added a little too deep of blue, but that's okay. I'll go back over that. Because guess what? I can add white to that. And he, Mr. Nave, if you look, he used, you can see his brush strokes. He used um, 
big brush strokes here. So we're just going to create this sky like this. We're going to mix our blue and white. It's going to get lighter as we come down. You can almost just do white. And I'm blending it by going side to side. Just blending. You can see how I'm blending from the light blue to the dark blue at the top. And again, I'm going to swish in my clouds. So I'm swishing those in like this. Just having fun with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look just like the picture either. You can make your sky look different. And there's nothing wrong with that. So now a little yellow. Just a little blue. Because I noticed a lot of yellow in Mr. Nave's clouds. He's got some pretty clouds here. He's got a little yellow at the top. He's got some yellow. And I waited just a minute so that my blue would dry so it wouldn't become green. Because if I would have mixed the yellow while the blue is super wet, then it would become green because yellow and blue make green. So I'm going to rinse that yellow out because I'm going back to adding blue. Add some blue in. I'm going to add some white. I'm just having fun with it. I'm going to squish in some more clouds over here. Swishing those clouds in. And I'm going to go ahead and let my sky come real close to my organic shapes because later we're going to do our trees over that. Swishing in the clouds. Just swishing them in. And I might add a little black like a little gray, because I noticed Mr. Nave used some gray in his clouds. So I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of gray here and there in my clouds. So there is my sky. So not real complex. I just did some clouds, some blue, and some white, and some swishes, and there you go. So now I'm going to start on this middle mountain. So the middle part of my picture right here. It's in the background still. Well, really, it's like, yeah, it's the background right here on the map. So if you can see that right there. I'm not going to paint this bush yet. I'm just going to paint what's behind the bush. And for this background, I actually see a lot of color. I see blue. I see green. I see red. I see yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some of those colors onto my palette. I'm going to put some red on my palette. A lot of times acrylic paint comes in tubes, so you could just squeeze the paint out. I wouldn't squeeze too much. I think I might have put a little too much blue, but that's okay. So now I'm going to mix my yellow and my blue, and that makes green. And I'm working on this background mountain, making some green. And I'm going to go ahead and paint this mountain. So he used a lot of strokes on this mountain. So I'm just going to have fun kind of swishing it like I did the clouds. And I'm going to add a little blue because he did use blue on these mountains. Blue and green. Swish in. And now we're going to swish over here. I see blue in the background. And now I'm kind of doing dots. I don't know if you can see the way I'm dotting it to make it look like plants. Now when I add a little red to my blue while it's still wet, 
What color do you think it'll make? Violet. So it'll make kind of a purpley color. So now I'm going to add a little red to that. And I do see red in the Colorado Mountains painting. But I think he might have added it while it was wet and made it purple. Because I see some purple too. And my brush is a little wet right now, so it's going to be more see-through the wetter it is. Still just doing dots. Now I'm going to add... Notice how I'm swishing my brush, but I'm not mashing it real rough. I'm not roughing up my brush. My brush still looks nice. We don't want to ruin our brush. Then I'm doing some yellow dots. And I'm going to add some yellow right here. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to add this green color again. Just mixing up my colors to make it look interesting. And it looks pretty. Looks like a pretty. Maybe there's flowers over there. Or maybe the leaves are changing colors. Now I'm going to add some blue over here. And I left the green in my brush, which is making it look kind of neat. And I'm just doing little dabs with my flatter brush. And I'm going to add a little red, some hints of red in there. I'm going to add some more blue. Some hints over here. It looks like there might be a little white, so I'm going to add some white. But I want your picture to be unique and look how you want it to look it doesn't need to look just like mine and now you can see you can tell where it's still wet because it'll be shiny where it's wet i don't know if you can see that it's shiny and you can look at your picture and if it's still shiny it's still wet and now i'm actually going to go ahead and paint this bottom portion and what do you notice about the bottom do you see that it got lighter on the bottom so this middle part is a little darker than the bottom part so it's really light so what can i do to make it a little lighter than the middle i can add white so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make my green color again by mixing blue and yellow because those make green this time i made a little more green and I see some dark patches of green, so I'm going to go ahead and put those in right here. But then I'm going to go back and add white and make a little light version of the green over here. And I'm going to add some white colors. So now I'm adding those light colors. I do see some yellow. I'm adding yellow. I see some blue, but I think it's blue mixed with white. So I think I'm going to add blue mixed with white. I did a similar project like this with first grade, and it was Tulips in Holland by Monet. And they loved it, and their flowers turned out beautiful. So I think this same concept will work really well for you, too. Just doing the little swishes. We're just swishing as we go. Swish, 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 swish. Swishing along. Adding in the color. I see lots of even pink. So the way you make pink is by mixing red and white. And we get pink. And I see some pink over here, so I'm going to add pink. And I might be adding more pink than what he has in there, but that's okay, because maybe I really like pink. That's my picture, really. We're just inspired by this journey right now. Now I'm going to go and add some more green. My Sharpie is showing through a little bit, but 
Remember at the beginning, um, yours should be in pencil and really light pencil at that. So hopefully yours is not showing as much as mine. I just mixed blue and yellow and I made it a little more blue than yellow this time. And I'm going to go back and just add a few darker spaces where I think it should be a little darker. And that's a lot of blue over here. So I'm going to add some blue. Maybe more white than that. But just for fun, I'm going to pop some blue over here too. And now I'm going to rinse. Since I feel like my brush is getting rinsed, I'm going to grab some white right out of there. And I'm going to mix. Make my light blue again. And then I'm going to put some light blue over here too. Try to cover my line just a little bit. And just paint what you see. Just paint the colors that you like and that you see. So the last thing we're going to do are our bushes right here. And I see red in the bushes. And I see, so I'm going to do the same. I'm going to use my smaller brush though for the bushes. And I'm going to pop some red on there. And hopefully it'll look a little different than the bottom. We're doing the same technique where we're just doing dot, 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 like this. And then I'm going to add my green. Just adding my green on the bush. I'm looking at his bush, but it doesn't have to look just like it. Okay, I'm going to make some more green over here. My green got a little too red. And red is across from green on the color wheel, meaning it's the complement. So that made it turn my muddy color, which is um, like I was saying, the shadows. You want to do the shadows with the complement? It got a little too shadowy. So now this is more of a blue green over here. I'm gonna add that in. That's a blue green over here. I see a lot of blue green on these trees. So I'm gonna jump over here and do some blue green over here. Like this. And then I'm seeing a shadow more on this side of the trees. So it's kind of right here. There's extra blue right here and right there. So that's what I'm adding right now with my little blue-green color. Just adding that shadow. And my paper keeps moving on me. Let me do this. I'm gonna hold it on a dry spot because if I if I pick something shiny that's still wet, it's gonna either smear or get all over my fingers. Okay. So now I'm gonna add more yellow. Might even be yellowy enough on my yellow. There we go. And now I'm adding more green on top of that tree. Using my smaller brush, I'm not mashing my brush into the paper. Remember, like we said earlier, well, we don't want to ruin our brushes. And I'm going to add straight yellow on there too, just for a little interest. Thing over here. And then some blue. I'm going to use the back of my brush. I'm going to add like a little tree branch in there to make it look more like a tree. And all I did was some lines to make it look like the branches. I 
And I'm adding, I'm going a little outside of my, my organic shapes. And I'm putting a few dots to make it look more like a tree up here against the sky. So I just added a couple of those little extra dots in there and it looks more like a tree. make some more green because I'm running out. Use my yellow. And I'm gonna let it mix right on my paper and see what happens. Art is sometimes a big fun experiment. Uh, this one, I think I'm going to add a little, I'm going to scratch the branch again like I did before on the other side, but then I'm going to go back over it with a little bit of red and see if that looks interesting. So I'm actually going to put red on my paintbrush on the back of it. And I'm just going to go right around what I already scratched. See if it adds interest. I think it looks cool. There we go. Now I'm going to add more green up here. Green real to this tree. And remember, we're just making tiny little lumps in the horizon against the sky to make it look more like a tree. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and scratch like a little bit on this tree too. Just a little bit just to make it be interesting and different. There we go. And now on this tree over here, we forgot about that one. We're going to go back and add some more color in. This one, the whole thing is kind of against the mountainscape. So if you wanted to make it stand out, you just do that, that same thing over here, where you just add like a little bit of pieces with your brush like that, just to make it stand out. Make it look more like leaves. And I'm going back over the red a little bit because it's a little too red. So, I feel pretty finished with it. We'd love to see what you created today and see how your artwork turned out. Um, just go ahead and send it to us via Messenger. And if you are out of any colors or anything, just contact us here at the Nave and we'll be happy to replace anything in your kit or if you're needing a kit. I hope you can watch next week when we do portraits. Um, I'm really excited about it and I'd love to hear feedback and see what you created. Bye! Remember, the Nave Museum is open Thursday and Friday from 12 to 5 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 12 to 4 p.m. We will be here with the, Royst, the paintings of Royston Nave until Sunday, October 11th, so please come in and see them in person. We'd love to have you.